Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Bastian. I'm working as a program manager at Vision, and today I'm going to talk to you about Star Maps. Um, so it's a road mapping tool uh, developed by uh, by your protocol labs. Um, so first, I'd like to talk about the benefits of having a roadmap for your project. Um, so of course, it's going to uh, help you clarify your goals and uh, objectives for your project, and it's kind of important because most of the time, the people in production um, really don't lack the um, they lack the high level vision uh, of the project uh, because they're so focused on uh, on their work, and so it's going to help you uh, communicate your your objectives and collaborate uh, inside inside the team um, because you're going to engage uh, your developers more uh, and obviously you're going to increase your visibility uh, towards external uh, audience um, and since we are in the network uh, we have a lot of uh, interdependency with, the, with each other so it's, it's very important in my opinion to uh, have a roadmap to communicate where you are currently in your project um, and so Doing this uh, this uh, work of uh, road mapping your project is going to force you to uh, set timelines by estimating your work uh, from low level to high level. Uh, you're going to define your milestones more uh, precisely because you're going to decide how the quantity of work that you're going to put in there, um, the features, uh, and uh, and your objectives for for each of these. Um, and you're, we also have to look at the dependencies that you have with other projects. Uh, so again, um, doing so will allow you to have much more information uh, when you're looking at your, at your project. Uh, so that's going to help you to make better decisions when you, you will need to change uh, the, the way you like the, the direction you're going um, if you have to at some point and you're going to be able to identify the uh, roadblocks um, much earlier into the process uh, of, uh, of working on, on your project. Uh, so that's going to save you time and, and resources for sure. Um, so yeah, so now you must really want to have a roadmap. Let's look at uh, Star Map. Um, so it was developed and it's still being developed by uh, Protocol Labs uh, with the specific needs of the network in mind. It's a very uh, flexible tool uh, that can be used to render uh, all kinds of roadmap uh, because we we in the network we have so many different team sizes and uh, kind of projects. Uh, we have people that are still doing research. We have people that are in very different uh, production cycles, um, and it all renders from GitHub issues. So that's very handy because you don't have to duplicate your uh, your tasks to just put them in a roadmap outside of the uh, GitHub uh, cycle. So with that said, uh, I just, I'm just going to show what we have uh, currently uh, at Vision um, in terms of roadmap. So this is uh, the roadmap for the project at Vision. Uh, so for now we have uh, three, but we are doing, you know, we are currently working to uh, adding more, more of these. Uh, so this is the standard view uh, for, for Star Maps. You have a timeline. Um, you can see all of the project issues are displayed um, on the timeline based on their ETA, which is uh, which you can see at the bottom left uh, of each card. Um, you let's. I'm gonna just click on the uh, IPVM uh, project issue to show you what's inside. So we have all of the milestones for IPVM uh, here for Q1 2023 to uh, future developments. Um, if I click on the right here on the date, yeah, you can see where we are currently. So that gives you a nice uh, view of uh, where we are currently on the project. Uh, we this is, there are three uh, view modes in um, in a star maps. So currently, we are using, using the overview one. But if we go in the detailed view, it's going to display all of the child issues for each of these milestones uh, in uh, in the in the star map. So there you are. So here you have the first milestone and all of the low level issues that are inside. And if I scroll down, you can see uh, the same for all of the other ones. Um, you can note that some tasks uh, have, a, well, all tasks have a progress bar, but when, uh, when they are completed, they are filled in green. And that, that's reflected as well in the, um, in the, uh, the, the milestones. You can see here, the, the, this one <laughs> is partially filled. Well, we are not quite there yet, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's because uh, we closed the because one in advance. Um, but yeah, so if I click into this uh, this milestone, you can see basically what we just saw in the de detail view. Um, and 
these these uh, these issues are all stacked on top of each other because they all share the same ETA, which is the same as the milestone they are in. But you can uh, customize it if you want, uh, if you'd like to um, order your task in a specific way you you want to work on them. Um, and yeah, so that's for the uh, basic view of star map. If I go back to my uh, fission project node, so uh, here I can view the issue in GitHub. So I'm going to show you how it is uh, formatted inside GitHub. Right, so for the fission project uh, GitHub issue, so this is a container. It, it doesn't have any uh, work to, 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 to be done. Uh, this is really made to contain all of the projects that we have at Fission, and same goes for the milestone issues. So all you need to do to have um, your issues rendered in, a, in, a, in Star Map is to add a children uh, list. So it's basically a bullet point list with uh, the, the URLs of, uh, of your issues to be done, and, uh, and an ETA, and that's it. So if I click here on the IPVM uh, project issue, uh, it's, we're going to see the um, the milestones, right? The the, pro the children of the of the project uh, are the milestones. Uh, again, we have an ETA here. We, I've, I've added some resources um, for people who are consulting the project to to find. And if I go again lower one level, right? So we have the objectives, the features that we want to bring with this milestone, um, so that. You know, in a sort of communication to, to towards the people who are interested in the project and want to learn more about it. Uh, again, we have the ETA, and here we have all of the children that need to be done to complete the milestone. Um, so, StarMap supports a GitHub task list. So, that's actually pretty handy because when all of your uh, GitHub issues share the same ETA, you can just reorder them. Uh, by with a drag and drop, and it's going to be reflected in star map as well. So I just uh, lower the metering. If I refresh star map, it's going to be lowered as well in the list. Uh, so you can prioritize your task this way um, pretty easily. Um, and yeah, it's very easy to add dependencies um, because again, you just have to grab the URL of a GitHub issue and add it in the description, like here in this list, uh, to, to show the dependency. So if, I want, if I'm waiting for a tech uh, to be released from an, another team, uh, you know, complete other projects, I can just uh, grab the, 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 the URL of their tasks or must or milestone, and I can just put it in here, and, and I, cre I can create as many levels of, uh, of deepness as I want. Like uh, currently at, at Fission, we are only using a project, milestone, and GitHub issues for lower level. But if I want to use epics, uh, user stories, uh, any kind of uh, container I can, I can just create a new GitHub issues, uh, label it the way I want, and I just throw URLs in there, in there and, uh, and I'm good. <laughs> okay, so just to show you a bit uh, what you can do with that. So let's say we have a, the Protocol Labs network as a root node that's going to uh, encapsulate all of the Protocol Labs network projects. Uh, so we have company one that has two projects. Uh, project A is working with epics and user stories. Uh, each user story has uh, several issues and uh, project B is only using milestones and GitHub issues. It really depends on the way you want to organize yourself, but you can create um, dependencies any way you want to, from milestone to epic, from epic to milestone, uh, issue to issue. Um, and you can uh, do the same with uh, completely other projects from other repos. Um, just uh, to separate and avoid uh, to put noise in repos, uh, I've created a specific repo for the Fission star map for all tasks that are used at con as containers. So here we have the project issues and my stone, my stone issues, right? Right now we have 26 issues open, so we put them in there to, to avoid uh, polluting the, the other repos. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the star map tool. Um, now, if you're interested in uh, building your own star map, uh, you can uh, go to starmap.site. Uh, they have a guide over there and templates for you to use for your, uh, for, for your star map. Um, there's also repos for the, uh, star, for the star map uh, software, and we have the, uh, our own repo for star map um, at Vision. So feel free to look at these for reference. Uh, if you need any help, don't hesitate to uh, poke uh, the team working on this on the Filecon Slack. They have a, a channel for this. They are very helpful. Uh, they'll be happy to, to help you with any issue you may have, and I will as well. So you can find me uh, on Slack on the Fission, or the Fission Discord. 
if you need uh, if you need any help. And so the QR code is for the Protocol Labs network uh, star map that I created, uh, hoping that uh, someday we'll have many many projects from the network uh, in there, uh, just to show you. Uh, how it's uh, looking right now. We have uh, two <laughs> companies' uh, projects in there, so maybe someday uh, dozens of, <laughs> of these. I uh, hope you will as well. <laughs> okay, that's it for, for Star Maps. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Hi, uh, thanks. Thanks for showing star map. That's a, um, something I help maintain. Um, uh, I'm really interested what features you are looking in, uh, what features you would like to see added the most first, like additional um, features or support. I know there's some issues we need to address, but. Uh, I've been struggling with uh, ETAs um, because I figure that we don't necessarily need an ETA for every uh, issue because, you know, sometimes you have containers that don't need an ETA and you will still have to put one in there. So the issue is how you will uh, render it uh, in the timeline if it, if, it doesn't have, uh, if it doesn't have an ETA. But uh, yes, you know, you sometimes you just want to put placeholders somewhere, but it's going to uh, give you an error um, instead. So yeah, the, there's that. Uh, but I had had a whole bunch of, uh, oh, sorry, a whole, whole bunch of, uh, of um, features that I wanted to request uh, regarding uh, star map, <laughs> but I, I, I can definitely talk to you about it. Um, yeah. But uh, we can can chat about it right after. Okay. Great. <laughs> cool. Money. Oh, there's one over there. I'm curious what you're finding this the most useful for. Like, what are what are maybe like the three things that you do with your star maps on like a weekly or monthly basis, and whether it's mostly within team or with stakeholders or with other groups that that you're that you're using it? Because I feel like we, you know, it's a new useful tool. It was created because we couldn't find anything else open source that did the things that we felt like we needed. But I think we'd love to see it have, you know, a wider community of maintainers and, um, you know, f filling that niche for other groups that want an open source planning tool, not having to put everything inside of some silo that only works within their organization. Yeah. And so I'm curious, like, what, what are the common use cases that we can then maybe share with others and, and build up more of an open source community around maintaining this? Yeah, uh, right now we've been mostly using it internally um, to communicate uh, how we are doing on the, our projects, especially, especially uh, IPVM, um, but also uh, new ones like uh, well, Goka Mirror that we've been recently planning. So it's been very useful uh, in that regard. But also uh, when you have dependencies with other teams, it's very easy to send them just the link of your Star Map and then they can see uh, okay, so you need you need the, you need this from me. Uh, that's cool. I'm going to to focus on that and. Uh, uh, help you there. So that's most of our uses uh, with that uh, at the moment. Makes and, total sense. And yeah. I will also answer it. So uh, Bastion is our first technical program manager at Vision. And I said, you need to be an ecosystem level TPM. Uh, Star Maps is brand new. We're going to help evangelize it because we think it's going to help us long term. We need to do roadmaps in some format. Let's do it this way. We've noticed that there are some teams who are putting protocols that we work on in their backlogs, not yet star map, star map enabled. And so the next thing we'd like is generally like more community evangelism and bootstrapping of like using it by default. And then we're trying to leave, we're like, what is the right method of like, I'm like, okay, Bastion, I saw WinFS mentioned on this slide, go track down the team and figure out if they've committed engineering resources to doing it. Uh, so that we can put it on the overall map. So I think this is, we're in this like boot up phase where like I'd really like us all to just do that. And then ideally it's a very useful tool where we can then work back and be like, oh, there's three teams pointing at needing to do X. Oh, that could be a small library or something else that like all three teams work on together. So that's our like hopes start network wide. Like, and it's a super useful tool, right? I think like we've, we've found we're like, there isn't anything else like this. We run a bunch of orgs. We're not in just one GitHub org. So it, it solves problems for us yeah. 
already, which is a really great starting point. So thank you for, thank you for building it. <laughs> yeah, I have my, my own whole list of feature requests. So I feel like we should uh, <laughs> start tracking them somewhere so that whoever feels strongly about them can A, help prioritize, B, help solve. Um, but as someone who uses it across many different teams in many different orgs and you want every group to be responsible for their own milestones, but then you want them all to roll up into one view where you can then take a screenshot of it and like present it of like, hey, this is what everyone is doing. Um, that's what I found it most useful for it, personally. It, it might be a really interesting starting point for even like turning the crank even more of about a few other things like, you know, do we create an open collective for star maps? I'm like, great, I'll throw 500 bucks a month into it. And then we can fund independence doing a backlog of tasks uh, uh, along it or something like that, right? I love that. I know of people who would take part of those 500 bucks and are random humans who would just start yeah. building stuff. I, I'm curious because I would assume some people might ask this question, uh, like how did you find using star maps compared to some of GitHub's more recent road mapping, uh, GitHub projects road mapping tools? Um, I think they don't have the same use case. Like GitHub projects is really more to track your issues on a daily basis. Uh, you, the milestones don't work the same way as well. Um, it's and also it's not made to reflect uh, several projects at a time. I mean, you can do that, but it's not optimal. At least not um, from a roadmap perspective. Uh, I feel like. It's much easier to flag dependencies using using star maps in general, um, and it also makes most more sense in the, in the in that uh, in the like the general layout of the tool. So yeah, uh, and in a way, um, you can also create so many different uh, layers uh, for your roadmap. Like I, I mentioned, you can create any kind of container, and you can't really do that in. In uh, the GitHub pro projects, like you really have to work in uh, in a waterfall. It's it's like a Kanban, like it's a it's, it's like a Trello, but in but in GitHub. Um, whereas here, you are really uh, creating. You can create uh, epics and user stories and really child issues uh, if you as much as you want. So it's not really the same use case, in my opinion. Um, so I think it makes more more sense to use uh, map for for roadmaps. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Maybe just one quick follow up. Maybe just. Uh, Molly and Boris, like, what is the, how do we get going on something like an open collective to drive some more? I'm not familiar with how we, how we do that. We haven't done it before, but you're in literally the right track for it. <laughs> join, join the working group, working group. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll put I, it I in will the, probably be there. <laughs> yeah. I'll put it in the hack MD. And I think even star mats itself being a tool that working groups are familiar with, right? Like it's another, a kit of tools, right? I mean, we should have Star Map for specs, <laughs> <laughs> right? You, you want to say something? Well, I think Steve just asked it. It was like, what? yeah, for a team that's coming at it from a cold start, what resources do we have? And yeah. uh, do you need a guinea pig <laughs> to help document the process? That's yeah, uh, well, you have the, the whole guide on Star Map that site that explains everything, like how to build your Star Map from, from scratch. Um, all you need to do is do the road mapping uh, uh, process for yourself. So you <laughs> you look at uh, you look at your spec. You look at the features you want to to produce uh, in which order. You, you you set your timelines and uh, you you create your GitHub issues based based on that. And you just have to format them uh, to be rendered in there. And uh, after that, once you have your uh, root node for your star map, which is uh, bas basically uh, like the the contain container for all of your projects in your team, you just uh, copy and paste the, U the URL, ah, sorry, the URL uh, in Star Maps, and it's going to be rendered automatically from there. The, 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 the site is like no BS. It starts straight into like the docs of how to get started. So that's like. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, just given that we are in the community governance track, I'm curious what we think about creating um, like project level star maps or th things that aggregate over top of various different working groups or um, highlight major like milestones for the IPFS project as a whole, which then 
you know, should be looking across the fission star maps and the IP steward star maps and the um, IRO star maps if they have one and the content routing privacy working group star maps. And, you know, each one of those has their own star map, ideally, which, you know, focuses on the, um, the contributions that are being made by that group, but then having something at a, a broader level that's able to surface the top level most important milestones that everyone can celebrate. I, I remember from my days doing project leadership stuff in IPFS that there's always that yearly request of like, what are the like 10 most important things that are happening this year that I should really be excited about and maybe help work on? Um, and so I'm curious if there's interest, challenges, like, you know, what would need to be true in order to make that possible? Yeah. I, I think one huge part of it ends up being um, how much of it is a roadmap that has committed engineering resources? How do we surface, we would, uh, how do we surface a signal that says, we would really like X, we absolutely can't build it, and that might be uh, technical skill, engineering bandwidth, or funding. Um, so there's a couple of other things that currently isn't really mapped in here, but somewhere along the way, we could use similar techniques, right? So uh, as an example, uh, GitHub repos have a funding.yaml. Um, and uh, so that would actually surface if a particular code repo had an attached way to pay it already. Uh, and that could be everything from an open collective to a Patreon to a Filecoin address. So those might be some other things. I'd, I'd, I think I'd love to see, like, I think the, the missing thing here actually is um, the hopes, wishes, and dreams that are like a superset of engineering resources, right? Like what happens before you write the roadmap almost? Maybe? Yeah, I, I think also surfacing visibility to people who don't have IPFS as their day job but are interested. Um, I know like, I remember being on the other side of that was like, hey, this is super interesting. Uh, what's going on? And it feels like you're opening a cupboard and like the entire universe is falling on you. Um, and so that having a way of summarizing things at a high level for, for a broader community of, of interested people, I think is, is something that would be extremely valuable. Um, yeah. cool. I, I think all of that feeds really neatly into the opening conversation that you two kicked off this morning. And a lot of those questions would be answered really neatly by a meta working group for the IPFS project. We shouldn't have thrown that on the slide. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.